The remainder of the day was spent in strengthening the line we now held. By night we were as strong against Lee as he was against us. During the night the enemy quitted our right front, abandoning some of their wounded and without burying their dead. These we were able to care for, but there were many dead and wounded men between the lines of the contending forces, which were now close together, who could not be cared for without a cessation of hostilities. So I wrote the following, Cold Harbor, Virginia, June 5, 1864, General R. E. Lee, Commanding Confederate Army. It is reported to me that there are wounded men, probably of both armies, now lying exposed and suffering between the lines occupied respectively by the two armies. Humanity would dictate that some provision should be made to provide against such hardships. I would propose, therefore, that hereafter, when no battle is raging, either party be authorized to send to any point between the pickets or skirmish lines unarmed men bearing litters to pick up the dead or wounded without being fired upon by either party. Any other method equally fair to both parties, you may propose for meeting the end desired, will be accepted by me. <sighs> Lee replied that he feared such an arrangement would lead to misunderstanding and propose that in future, when either party wished to remove their dead or wounded, a flag of truce be sent. I answered this immediately by saying, Cold Harbor, Virginia, June 6, 1864, to General R. E. Lee, commanding Army of Northern Virginia, your communication of yesterday's date is received. I will send immediately, as you propose, to collect the dead and wounded between the lines of the two armies, and will also instruct that you be allowed to do the same. I propose that the time for doing this be between the hours of 12 meridian and 3 p.m. today. I will direct all parties to going out to bear a white flag and not to attempt to go beyond where we have dead or wounded and not beyond or on ground occupied by your troops. Lee's response was that he could not consent to the burial of the dead and removal of the wounded in the way I proposed. But when either party desired such permission, it should be asked for by a flag of truce, and he had directed that any parties that I had sent out, as mentioned in my letter, to be turned back. I answered. The knowledge that wounded men are now suffering from want of attention between the two armies compels me to ask a suspension of hostilities for sufficient time 
to collect them in, say, two hours. Permit me to say that the hours you may fix upon this will be agreeable to me, and the same privilege will be extended to such parties as you may, may, may wish to send out on the same duty without further application. <sighs> Lee acceded to this, but delays in transmitting the correspondence brought it to the 7th of June, 48 hours after it commenced, before parties were got up to collect the men upon the field. In the meantime, all but two of the wounded had died. And I wrote to Lee. General R. E. Lee, commanding Army of North Virginia, I regret that your note of 7 p.m. yesterday should have been received at the nearest Corps headquarters to where it was delivered after the hour which had been given for the removal of the dead and wounded had expired. 10.45 p.m. was the hour at which it was received at Corps headquarters. And between 11 and 12, it reached my headquarters. As a consequence, it was not understood by the troops of this army that there was a cessation of hostilities for the purpose of collecting the dead and wounded. And none were collected. Two officers and six men of the 8th and 25th North Carolina Regiment which were out in search of the bodies of officers of their respective regiments, were captured and brought into our lines owing to this want of understanding. I regret this, but will state that as soon as I learned of the fact, I directed that they should not be held as prisoners but must be returned to their commands. These officers and men, having been carelessly brought through our lines to the rear, have not determined whether they will be sent back the way they came or whether they will be sent by some other route. Regretting that all my efforts for alleviating the sufferings of wounded men left upon the battlefield have been rendered nugatory. I remain, etc. U.S. Grant, Lieutenant General.